Okay. If a gumball is randomly chosen from a bag that contains exactly six yellow, five green, and four red, what is the probability that the gumball chosen is not green? All right, so there's five greens, six and four. Six and four is 10, and five is 15. That's our total. Now, whenever we're doing probability, we always do success over total, okay? Our total is 15, and in this case, success means not green. So yellow's not green, and also red is not green. So that's 10 out of 15, which is not a choice. But we can actually reduce this number. So we do 2 times 5, and we do 3 times 5. The 5's cancel out, and that gives us 2 thirds, which is choice F. The number of students participating in fall sports at a certain high school can be shown with the following matrix. The athletic director estimates the ratio of the number of sports awards that will be earned to the number of students participating with the following matrix. Given these matrices, what is the athletic director's estimate for the number of sports awards that will be earned for these fall sports? Okay, so these in the first chart here are the number of awards, I believe. Let me see. Uh, is that right? Uh, sorry, the number of students. Okay, number of students. So the unit here is students. Okay, so in, for example, this is 80 students, right? Um, whereas here, this is a ratio of student uh, awards to students. Okay, so this is how many awards there are per student, right? Because the word ratio means divide, and it's always top over bottom, you know, first thing over second thing. So awards over students, okay? So now, using the idea of dimensional analysis, right, we can take the first one from here, which is 25 students. Make sure to include the units in there. And then we multiply that by 0.2 uh, awards per student. Okay. Now, why do we multiply them? Well, because when we multiply them, the student's unit will cancel out. And we'll end up with 25 times 2 is 50. Move the decimal once is 5. And that's 5 awards. Okay. So, since they're asking for the number of awards, this is how we're going to find it. By multiplying these pairs. Okay, so 25 we have to multiply by 0 0.2, then we have to multiply 30 with 0 0.5, then we have to multiply 50 with 0 0.3, and finally 80 with 0 0.4. And of course this could be done in the calculator, but it's not so hard to do by hand, so may as well practice our mathematics uh, by hand or in our head, so to speak. So 25 times 2 is 50, move the decimal in once is 5. 30 times 5 is 150, move the decimal in once, that's 15. 50 times 3 is 150, move the decimal in once, is 15. 80 times 4 is 320, move the decimal in once, is 32. So these two make 30. So we have 30 and 32 is 62, right? And then add 5 to that, you get 67. So that's choice D. Okay. Usually when they give this, I generally don't read it until I need to. I could always refer back to it if I need to. Okay. What is the average number of students enrolled per section? So this is students per section. Okay. Um, notice again the units, right? So how many questions already have we looked at the units? It's a very important concept because um, it tells us what to do. In fact, here we have to basically see how many students per section. So we need the probably the total number of students and then divide by the number of sections. We also see the word average. And as we discussed earlier, average equals sum over number is our go-to formula, right? <clears throat> so looks like we're going to have to add up all the students and then divide by the number of uh, sections. So let's see. We're talking about U.S. history here. So U.S. history is these number of students. So we can put the sum in, 25 plus 29 plus 24, divide that by the three sections. So we'll use the calculator here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that whenever you have multiple terms on a numerator like this, you need parentheses around it, okay? Otherwise, the calculator will not 
give you the correct answer. So 25 plus 29 plus 24, if I just put an equals there, I'll get the numerator, then divide that by 3, and I get 26. So just to reiterate, if I was to do 25 plus 29 plus 24 and then divide that by 3 right away, it would only do a 24 over 3, which would give me 8, you see, and then it would add the rest. So it would come out incorrect, you see. <clears throat> you can remedy that with parentheses around the entire numerator, or do it as I showed. The school wants to have all the students enrolled in social studies classes read the same books at the same time so that the author of the book can speak to the students at an assembly. The school originally purchased two sets of 30 books each, but now one set is missing three books and the other set is missing five books. For which of the following class periods, if any, are there not enough books available for each student to have one book? So originally, they had two sets, each with 30. One of them is missing three books and one of them is missing five books. So right now, this has 27 and this has 25. So now we have to look at each period and see how many books are required. So in period one, we have an enrollment of 23. So we can use either set and we'll be fine. In period two, we have two classes here, one of which has 24, one of which has 25. So we can give the 25 here and the 24 here, and there's two books to spare. And here there's one book to spare. So there's enough books for period two as well. Now for period three, we have this and we have this. So the question is, do we have enough books? If we have 29 students, the answer is no, we're not gonna have enough books, right? Because there's too many students comparison to the amount of books that are available. Okay, so period three is gonna give us a problem. So already we're leaning towards one of these two choices. So we have to check period four. So period four is here and here. So we have 26 students. We can give them the set of 27 books. And then 24 students, we can give them the set of 25 books. So that will be fine. So our answer is going to be B. What expression must the center cell of the table below contain so that the sums of each row and each column are equivalent? Well, the sums of each row and column are equivalent. Well, I could take the sum of this row, right, and figure out what it is. So 9 minus 4 is 5. Then 5 plus 2 is 7x. Um, so now I need the next row to also equal 7x. So 7x minus 3x is 4x. So I would need to add three more x's in order to get 7x from this row. Okay. So, so far I'm leaning towards 3x in the mid missing space there. And just to make sure, let's do a vertical to see what we get here. So 9 minus 5 is 4, 4 plus 3 is 7. So it seems to check out, okay. Point A is to be graphed in a quadrant, not on an axis, okay. If the x and y coordinate of point A are to have the same signs, meaning either they're going to be both positive or both negative, then point A must be located where? Well, not so bad. So it could be located, for example, here, in which case the x and y will be both positive. And it can also be located somewhere here where they're both negative, okay, to the left and down. So it's either quadrant one or three, choice E. Reggie knows how many different five, uh, sorry, Reggie knows how to make five different entrees, four different sides, and six different desserts. How many different meals can Reggie make? Okay, so this is a counting principle question. All right, counting principle. And it requires this dash method, okay? So we have to see how many ideas do we have for the first. So there's five different entrees, so we could choose any one of those five for our entree. Then there are four different side dishes, so we could choose any one of those four and we can choose any one of these six options for dessert. So we can mix and match. So we could do this and this and this, and means multiply. So we just have to multiply the numbers. We get 30 times four, which is 120. Okay, choice J. At a bottling plant, 10,000 liters of carbonated water are needed to produce 3,000 bottles of soda. How many liters of carbonated water are needed to produce 750 bottles of soda? So this is definitely a proportion question. 
So one thing to be careful about with proportions is there's two different types. There's direct and there's inverse. So before you actually solve the problem, which usually will look like this, right, with the fraction, um, you'd want to ask yourself, if I increase one of the variables, what happens to the other? Does it increase? Or if I increase one, does the other decrease? Okay, this is the situation for inverse. Um, as it turns out in this situation, right, if I have sort of more water, I would assume I, that that would make more soda. So it seems to be that we're in the direct situation, all right, which calls for a uh, fraction. Basically, A1 over B1 equals A2 over B2, right? Whereas if we were inverse, we would want to use the following formula, where instead of dividing, we actually multiply the separate pieces together, okay? So anyway, we're going to follow this paradigm. So uh, 10,000 uh, liters of carbonated water. So 10,000 of water produces 3,000 of soda. And then how many liters carbonated water? So X liters of water corresponds with 750 liters of soda. Uh, okay, so from here we just need to solve for X. So we just need to remove this 750. We could do that by multiplying both sides with 750 or by dragging the 750 diagonally across the equal sign. And now that we set it up, we don't really need the units anymore. Okay. This is gone because I already moved it. So now I just need to figure out what this is. I could put it into the calculator, but even easier is I could just look at what I have. Okay. So I could do this division first. The zeros cancel. One, two, and three. So let's erase those. Those three and those three. Um, so from here, I can recognize that 750 is really 75 times 10. So I'm just going to put a times 10 over here. And then 75 is really 25 times 3. Okay, so I'm factoring these numbers down. The reason being is that I want to cancel out this 3. Okay. So I'm left with uh, 25 times 10 times 10. So every time you times by a 10, you add a 0 to the number. So we get 2,500. If a rectangle measures 20 by 48, okay, 20 by 48, what is the length in meters of the diagonal? Okay, the diagonal will be here, and we would use Pythagorean theorem, right, because we have a right angle triangle. Um, so, let's see. Usually I like to check and see if it's a multiple of a 3, 4, 5, or a, right, 3, 4, 5, or a, uh, what's the other one? 5, 12, 13, I believe, right? And it looks like this might be a multiple of the second option here. So if I times by 4, I'll get 20, I'll get 48, and 13 times 4 gives me 52. So this is the missing piece uh, right here. So it's answer choice F. Of course, if you didn't know how to do that, you could have done 20 squared plus 48 squared and square rooted the result, and you would get the same answer. For all positive integers a, b, and c, which of the following expressions is equivalent to a over c? All right, so the question is, well, what kind of reductions can we make? So here we have, notice, multiplication and division. And according to our newly developed PEMDAS, which is now correctly written, with these being vertical, okay, uh, multiplication and division are on the same playing field, okay? So you can do it in any order you please. So in particular, I would choose to divide these numbers first. And that would leave me with a result of A over C, which means that A is the correct answer. Now let's have a look and see why the others are not correct. So this one would be A squared over C squared. So that's equivalent to A over C squared. All right. This one here is going to be AC over CA, which effectively is AC again. A's will cancel and the C's will cancel. So that's going to just equal 1. This one, a lot of times people will think, can I cancel out this B? The answer is no. Okay. Why? Let's, let's discuss that. All right. So we have this. And so the question is, can we cancel the B? Well, the answer is no, because here we have subtraction and here we have division. And again, with the PEMDAS, division takes precedence, right? Now, 
let's turn these into numbers just to see what exactly is going on here. So if we had 3 minus 2 over 4 minus 1, okay, what would this equal? Well, you probably see that this equals a 1 and this equals a 3, so it would be 1 third, right? But notice what we did. We did this subtraction first and this subtraction. Then we did the division at the end, right? Um, so really, there is an invisible parenthesis around these that is not written, but it is very important to realize, okay? So once you understand that, you know that this has parentheses around it, okay? And so therefore, the only way to cancel it is if the entire thing was ex exactly the same, okay? So collectively, this whole thing is a factor because it's part of this division problem. But individually, all right, each of these pieces is a term. And terms can only cancel if you have sort of opposite signs, okay? So they cancel through addition, subtraction, uh, not through multiplication, division, like this, okay? That's a no-no. So anyway, uh, this can't be simplified. It just stays as is, right? And same thing here. These do not cancel. Uh, so it's choice A.